I was at the National Institutes of Health for many years, and I made the decision almost 18 years ago now to come to Weill Cornell. It, without question, was the best decision that I made in my career. It's a wonderful place to work, and I see we're just not only terrific in terms of science and medicine here at Weill Cornell, but it's advancing so rapidly that uh, you, know, you get up in the morning and you're excited about going to work, excited about the new discoveries that are going to be made, and how we can translate that to humans. Our research is in genetic medicine. This is a fantastic time to be doing that kind of research. You know, 20, 30 years ago, we knew maybe 20, 30, 50, 100 genes. But 10 years ago, the whole human genome was sequenced. We know now all 25,000 of the human genes. And where 10 years ago it cost a billion dollars and took years to sequence that first human gene genome, it's now we can do your genome, all of your genes, in one week and we can do it for less than $10,000. All human disease is basically our genetic variability and the environment, the complex environment that we're exposed to. And so how your genes interact with the environment dictate your risk. You may be more at risk for getting diabetes, I may be more at risk for getting heart disease, and that's because of our parents. Now we can't choose our parents, but if we knew what our genes were and how they vary, we can be advised in terms of what we should be doing in terms of our lifestyle and, of course, the appropriate drugs to protect against getting disease. Depending on your genes, you may metabolize or, or deal with different drugs in different ways. And so, because of your genes, we may choose to treat you with one drug and someone else with a different drug, all for the same disease. We know, for example, in collaborative studies we've done with our medical school in, in Doha, uh, that uh, there are genetic variations of some of the proteins that carry lipids in our, in our blood. And we have found because of that, uh, something we discovered in Doha, that uh, it's very applicable to patients in the United States, that up to 1% of the patients that we see might have this mutation, might be more susceptible to having high lipids, and so they're more risky for eating a steak or having a Big Mac than someone who wouldn't have this mutation. We think about this in a generic term called personalized medicine. How can we take your genes, your genetic variability, and translate that to your care? The very important concept is we can now apply personalized medicine directly to you. We can take your genetic information and make decisions about what drugs are optimal for you. You may metabolize a drug faster than another individual or slower. And so one drug might be more effective or one dose may be more effective for you than another individual. And by understanding your genes and the variations in your genes, we can tailor therapies directly for you. One very important concept that I lecture to the medical students in their first year is it, independent of what they're going to be, whether they're a surgeon, an internist, a pediatrician, a pathologist, a psychiatrist, they will be genetic medicine doctors because genetic medicine will permeate all disciplines of medicine. It will affect decisions in terms of drugs, therapies, surgeries. But not only that, we can use genes now as therapies. We can take genes and administer them to individuals in gene therapy and help them in terms of genes that are dysfunctional or missing and correct the abnormality. We have several approaches in terms of uh, gene therapy. One is in cardiovascular disease. You know, we have patients that have cardiac surgery, and that's very effective. We have patients who have stents and other cardiologic approaches, and that's very effective. But sometimes you see patients where those therapies are no longer effective. Their disease is too diffuse in their hearts. And one strategy we can use now is to use gene therapy to put a gene into the heart to tell the heart to make new blood vessels. Sort of a bio bypass, getting around the obstruction by telling the heart to make the new blood vessel. Another approach uh, that we're using is we're dealing with childhood disorders where they have problems in terms of metabolizing proteins within their neurons, their brain cells. And some of these disorders are fatal by putting genes directly into the brain. And the study we're doing right now uh, here at, at Weill Cornell is to correct that by using a virus to put a normal gene directly into the brain and to correct the abnormality. 
genetics will affect our patients uh, now and in the, in the near future in terms of uh, using genetics to understand what drugs to use and how much of those drugs to use, using genetics to determine uh, for their disease of what kind of uh, therapies to use and how aggressive the disease would be or not, uh, using genetics to use genes to administer to individuals to help treat them. And this is exponentially uh, advancing. And so five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, uh, this will be permeating all of medicine. The new medical research building is very, very important for Weill Cornell. I mean, this is a time where science is uh, moving so rapidly, and this doubles our research space, enables us to attract uh, scientists, physician scientists from around the world to come work at Weill Cornell and to help all of us in terms of advancing uh, medicine and knowledge. And we're, we're now in an era where science is so exciting. We have technologies and knowledge now that is moving so fast and so exponentially by utilizing the research building in combination with such clinical care that we have uh, at Weill Cornell uh, is a terrific combination. And I think the future is, is unlimited.